Hello everyone, this is probably my favorite video to do so far because this is my favorite system in RPGs and MMORPGs. So we're going to be talking about trees, not only combat trees. In this video, I'm actually going to be focusing on combat trees, but in RPG Builder, you will have um, combat trees, gathering trees and crafting trees. So what I mean by trees is what we usually refer as uh, talent trees or uh, progression trees or passive trees. So things that you can see in World of Warcraft, Grim Down, Diablo, Path of Exile, things like that. All these type of trees that you've been um, enjoying and playing in those games, you will be able to reproduce very easily in um, RPG Builder. And as always, without having to type a single line of code because everything is done in the editor. So uh, talking about not having to code anything, uh, when you look at this tree right now, ob obviously this is placeholder UI, right? I'm not talking about how good it looks, but um, if you see the position of those abilities and stuff, these were not made by me. Like I didn't personally go in my canvas and create those um, abilities and stuff like that. This is generated by RPG Builder. So let me quickly show you the UI part and then we will get in the, um, well, the real part, which is, you know, how to assign abilities, requirement, and so on. So to access combat trees, you go to uh, RPG Builder, Combat, and Combat Trees. And here you can see that we have Arcanist and Pyromancer. So first thing to do in uh, your combat trees is choose a tier amount. In this case, it's eight. And tiers is what I call those kind of columns that we don't really see, but you see that the abilities are in different lines. So we have one here, two, Three, and it continues like that and in this case we have eight so we don't really see it of course but uh, it's here and if we will go and go ahead and put it to 15 um, and save and refresh the UI here you see that well actually let me put it to a bit uh, never mind it was 5 and not 15 so let's save again and refresh the UI and here you can see that now it goes to the right so it has been added we still don't see it because there is nothing in there but uh, you see how easy it is to make your tree bigger and give yourself more space you know uh, but now let's see how we actually decide where those abilities are and this is also very simple if you look at the ability list here so those four abilities that we can find here the fireball one for example let's look at it it has a tier and a row value. So once again, very straightforward. If tier is one, it's going to be in the first column. And if row is four, rows goes from one to seven. So uh, I made it so that you can have up to seven abilities per uh, column. And if four is the value, then it's going to be, you know, the fourth um, ability. If we wanted this to be the second now, we we'll just save that, uh, refresh the UI, and now you see that the fireball is still on the first column, but as the second spot. Um, and you know, how quickly would this to be, you know, for example, if we wanted all abilities on the same line, but one after the other, we would assign the, the um, tier one to all of them and uh, increase row by one for each ability, save, refresh the UI, and now they are all on the same line. And here you can already get an idea of um, how practical this system is and how quick it is to iterate and create and by the way this is all done in game like we are in game right now so you don't even have to leave um play mode to do all that you can literally just tweak your ui and see it directly in game and uh, the next time you leave play mode and go go back in game it's going to be the exact same thing so that's really really cool uh so that's pretty much it for the ui part uh i kind of want to put it back how it was before because I think it looked better. Um, so let's do that way, or maybe six here. And this one was on the third one, and six. That's it. So uh, now, when it comes to actually uh, building a tree, so as you can see here, we also have a search bar, which is you know pretty. Uh, useful but uh, these abilities all have fire so it didn't filter anything but if i go and type ball we only see fireballs so this is of course very useful because you will most likely at least i will when i'm making a game with rpg builder have very 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 long list of abilities because 
I like when trees are very in-depth and stuff. So it's very useful to be able to filter those by names. Um, but if we look at what um, what each of the small panels are made of, is basically an ability, right? So in this case, Fireball. You can choose whatever ability as you want. You can just select uh, a different one at any time. And um, as of right now, none of them have requirements. But of course, requirements are a big part of trees. Because otherwise, if you could get all nodes with no requirements, there is no point. Uh, it would be too easy. So if you click the plus button, it's going to add a new requirement for this ability. And we have a list of five different requirements for now. I'm most likely going to be adding new ones later. If you have any suggestion, let me know. But here you can see that uh, we, can, we can require um, a certain amount of, of points spent in a tree before unlocking this ability. Uh, so if I actually do this for the Fire Nova and uh, say that this should be one point, so and hit save. And go in game. I'm actually gonna close that. Um, so for now we have two points, right? But we cannot learn this Fire Nova. And the reason for that is because we didn't spend a single point yet in this tree. So if we do learn the Fireball, now we can learn the Fire Nova. And you see also, I'm gonna come to that a bit later, but the visuals of the abilities and nodes are changing based on the current rank and so on. But, uh, so this was to show you the first requirements. So you can actually, you know, require a certain amount of points to be spent in a tree before um, being able to unlock an ability. Uh, for the fire wave, we could require a specific class uh, level. So here, whatever class you would assign, for example, it could be mage and say 12 and save, then you will only be able to unlock this fire wave uh, if your class level is um, 12 or above. So that's another useful one. Same for the skill level, I'm not going to explain it's the exact same as class level, but for a skill. Item is a bit uh, more interesting, uh, and it can be used for, you know, some pretty cool uh, design. Uh, this could require you to own a specific item in your bag as at the moment you want to learn an ability. So this could be pretty neat if uh, you wanted to, I don't know, have a very rare item dropping on a, on a certain boss. And only uh, if you have this item, you can learn some abilities or some recipes or whatever. Uh, so that could be pretty cool. You can require uh, the count. So it could be one or 100, 10,000, 10, whatever you want. And you can also choose if it should be consumed or not. And the last one is uh, ability known. So for example, we could only learn Fire Wave if uh, Fireball is already learned. So let's try this and save that. And let's unlearn fire wave, uh, Fireball. And now uh, Fire Wave is not possible to be learned because we don't know Fireball. But if I now learn Fireball, I can learn Fire Wave. So that's uh, pretty much all I wanted to show you for, um, you know, um, the, the UI part and also the combat tree part in general. So you can have as many abilities as you want and you can have as many uh, requirements for abilities as you want. So that's pretty neat. Now, let me quickly show you um, how cool that is. So now that we learned the fireball abilities and those one, we can drag and drop them, but we can't drag and drop this one, of course, because we didn't learn it. But as you can see, Abilities have ranks, right? So if you're not familiar with how ranks um, are working in uh, abilities, I suggest you watch the ability video. Um, but let's use our uh, fireball ability. You can see that now it's just, you know, a basic uh, one projectile fireball. And if we go back in the combat tree, actually, let me give myself some uh, experience for the class. So we get some points and so on. So now we have 12 points to spend um, and go to rank two of the fireball. Now it's a different ability. So this is where you start to understand how cool um, combat trees can be because it can really let your player choose where they want uh, to specialize and get better at and spend their points. 
um, and let's go to rank three. And now it is instead of two, um, three projectile. Actually, uh, I forgot to um, put this back to projectile and save. That's why the ability didn't work. And now it should work just fine the next time we use it. And now you see rank three is three projectiles. So um, yeah, that's pretty cool. At least I like it. I hope you do too. And you can have as many combat trees uh, per class as you want and just go from one to another. They could be using the same points or different points and each ability has its own cost. So um, as you can see here, um, when an ability is not learned at all, the node is red. And on the top right here, you can see a number. This is the cost it will you know, cost you. I mean, the amount it will cost you to unlock this ability or this rank. So we have 13 points right now. If we learn that, we now have 12, right? Now it's green because we actually know this ability. Yellow is when the, the ability is maxed. But of course, those colors are very easy to, to change for you um, in the UI. And now you see that we can go down in rank or go up. And if we go up, now it's showing the, the cost for the next rank and so on. So that's it for this video. I hope you like it. I'm looking forward to uh, start and complete the gathering and crafting trees also because this is going to be a lot of fun. Let me know what you think about this system. Let me know um, if you have any suggestions or questions. Subscribe to the channel for more videos and join the Discord so we can start chatting. See you in the next one.